Hi everyone. So today we're going to continue our discussion on energy and we are going to talk about the law of conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred from one form to another. So the main thing that I want you to remember with this is that the total energy of the system is not changing. Okay, so the total energy of an isolated system remains constant or does not change. Now, this word isolated system, or I guess two words, isolated system, um, what that means is just the thing that we are talking about. Now, sometimes we just talk about the object. Sometimes, um, especially if there's friction involved, we can then include like the ground or something like that so that we still have an isolated system. Now, we're going to talk more about types of systems like that and outside forces and how those affect energy next week when we talk about work. But right now we're going to just say the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. So what that means for us is that the total amount of energy is never changing, but that energy can be transformed from one form into another. So for example, Energy can be transformed from gravitational potential energy into mechanical kinetic energy. It could be transformed from kinetic energy to thermal energy, but still the total amount of energy is never changing. So what we get here is we get a new equation that we can apply the equations that we learned last week to this new equation. Now here's an example here, and I apologize, it is a little bit morbid. Um, we have this person jumping from a burning building, but don't worry, there's firefighters down below about to catch that person, so they're gonna be totally fine. Um, but we know that the person starts from rest up here when they jump out. We are at a height, so we have gravitational potential energy. Now, when someone is leaping from that burning building, they are going to be losing potential energy because the height is decreasing. And we can see that they go from 10,000 joules of potential energy to 7,500 to 5,000 joules to 2,500 joules to zero joules. So we're decreasing potential energy. Now, we also know that as the force of gravity is pulling that person down towards the earth, it, there is an acceleration, which means the velocity is increasing, which means the kinetic energy is increasing. So we're going from a kinetic energy of zero to a kinetic energy of 2,500 joules to a kinetic energy of 5,000 joules to 7,500 joules to 10,000 joules. So we can see, again, the kinetic energy increases. Now, if we take the sum of the potential energy plus kinetic energy at any point in this person's fall, we can see that it's going to equal the total amount of energy or 10,000 joules. Another important part to think about here is that you can see that the total energy could be a combination of potential and kinetic, or sometimes the person or thing doesn't have one of those types of energies. So the total energy could just be equal to the potential energy or equal to the kinetic energy down here. So it could be a combination of the two, or if say they don't have potential or kinetic energy, it could be just all the energies in one type of energy. And we'll see uh, examples of that as well. Now you might be asking me, uh, Ms. Stewart, what about like, for example, the kinetic energy of a baseball player sliding to a stop like this? He had kinetic energy, but then he loses its kinetic energy. I thought you said that kinetic energy or just energy in general can't be destroyed. Well, what I say to that is if we take our system, our isolated system as the baseball player and the ground, What's happening here is that energy is not getting destroyed, it's just changing forms. So the player's energy is not just gone here. What's happening is it's transformed into another type of energy. The friction from the ground is transforming that energy into thermal energy. If we had, say, a car crash or something like that, there could also be sounds happening. That's also another type of energy. So that energy is not lost. It's just transformed into another type of energy. Now it gets a little bit complicated when we talk about the isolated system being just the baseball player. Um, then we have a non-conservative force. That's what friction is. And that non-conservative force is taking away some of the energy. 
But there is another term for that and another equation that we're going to be learning next week. So don't worry about that now. For now, just think about how when we have the system being the baseball player and the ground, the energy is getting transformed from kinetic energy to thermal energy. All right, so now let's actually apply this law of conservation of energy to an equation. Now, the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, so therefore it is conserved. So that means that energy initial will equal energy final. And here we're talking about total energy initial and total energy final. Now, energy initial and energy final, those are going to be made up of a combination of potential and kinetic energy. So I'm going to insert that into the equation now. So I have energy initial is potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial. And energy final is potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. Now, we learned two different types of equations for potential energy yesterday. So if I have gravitational potential energy, I know that is mass times acceleration of gravity times height. I know if it's elastic potential energy, it's one half times K, the spring constant, times X, which remember is our position from equilibrium squared. So with gravitational potential energy, that initial potential energy here becomes MGH. And then final is MGH final. And then we insert also our kinetic energy equation into here. And then with elastic potential energy, I can insert into this potential energy initial, I can insert the elastic potential energy equation here and here for the final. Now, I do want to make one note is that most of the time we're going to be using this gravitational potential energy. Um, but I did want to show you what the conservation of energy equation looks like with elastic potential energy as well. Now, one more note before we do our example. Notice how I have the subscripts just on the quantities that are actually changing. So for example, in gravitational potential energy, the mass is not changing, the acceleration of gravity is not changing. The only thing that's changing is the height. So I only have height initial and I have height final over here. In kinetic energy, the mass, again, is not changing, but the velocity is changing. So I have velocity initial here and velocity final here. For elastic potential energy, the spring constant K is not changing, but the position from the equilibrium will be changing. So I have the X initial here and X final here. All right, so notice how we don't put subscripts on mass, on acceleration of gravity, on spring constant K. All right, so here's our example. We have starting from rest, a skier glides down a frictionless hill of 100 meters, then ascends another hill of height 90 meters as shown in the figure below. What is the speed of the skier when she reaches the top of the second hill? So just like every other example, we're gonna start with our givens. So it says, the first three words say starting from rest. So what does that tell us? Yes, it tells us our initial velocity is zero meters per second. So we write that down. Initial velocity is zero. It then says that the skier glides down a frictionless hill of 100 meters. So our initial point right here, A, we're at a height of 100 meters. So I'm going to put H initial or height initial equals 100 meters. And then she ascends another hill of height 90 meters as shown in the figure below. So our point B right here is going to be our final point, And we have a height final of 90 meters. Notice how this figure is not drawn to, drawn to scale. <laughs> um, and then it says, what is the speed of the skier when she reaches the top of the second hill? So we want to know our final velocity. And I always put final velocity equals question mark. Now, our next thing that we might notice is that, you, do you see how they don't actually give us a mass? Which is kind of weird. You might be like, but Ms. Stewart, we don't have enough information. Well, we'll see why they don't give us a mass in a second, okay, I promise. All right, now we wanna write down our equation. So I know since energy is conserved, it's going to stay the same. So I have energy initial equals energy final. I'm going to now plug in potential and kinetic energy in both the initial and final case. So I have potential energy initial and kinetic energy initial equals potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. 
I'm then going to plug in my equations for gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Notice I'm just using gravitational potential energy here because I they're giving me heights, a height initial, height final. So I have potential energy initial is mass times gravity, acceleration of gravity times height initial plus kinetic energy initial here equals potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. And then now I can start plugging in values and things like that. Now, first and foremost, it does tell us that she starts from rest, which means that our initial velocity right here is zero, which means that this entire term is going to cancel out because zero times anything is zero. Now, the other thing I want you guys to notice is that do you see how there's a mass in every single term? That means that mass cancels out as well because I can just divide mass, divide every term here by mass and therefore mass cancels out. So now mass cancels out, which is why they don't give us a mass. And then now we can write our new equation. So I have acceleration of gravity times height initial equals acceleration of gravity times height final plus one half velocity final squared. And now I can plug in my numbers. So we know that acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared on the earth. Height initial was 100 meters, height final was 90 meters, and then we're solving for final velocity. So if I just, sorry, not divide, <laughs> if I multiply 9.8 times 100, I get 980. If I multiply 9.8 by 90, I get 882. So this equation becomes this right here. I'm then going to subtract 882 from both sides. So we get 98 equals 1 half final velocity squared. I'm then going to multiply both sides by two in order to get rid of that one half. So multiplying both sides by two, we get 196 equals final velocity squared. And then to solve for that final velocity, now we just square root both sides. So when we square root both sides, we get final velocity equals 14 meters per second. All right, so that's a classic example of a conservation of energy problem. Find several other examples on your homework tonight so you can practice that. And let me know if you guys have any questions. Feel free to email me at any time. I will see you guys next time. Bye.